Hello YouTube and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be taking another look at the Dell Optiplex GX150. Now, it's the thing that's making all of this noise because it has a 20 gigabyte mechanical hard drive inside. And even though it's only 20 gigabytes, it's plugged into it and it still works and it's running just fine. So we're gonna be using that to install some software today. But if you want to see some more content about this, I have actually made some videos in the past covering the hardware of this machine and also installing Windows 2000 and all of the drivers necessary to get this machine up and running. But in today's video, we're going to be checking out the legendary Half-Life 2, which has a interesting requirement in that it needs an internet connection. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, it just needs the internet. There's nothing really strange about that. And you're completely right. A lot of games nowadays do use the internet in some way. Future jump cut because that explanation was taking way too much time. Basically what I'm trying to say is that this is Half-Life 2 released in 2004 and it wants an internet connection. But the problem is that, well, even though these system requirements were accurate at one point, they're not as accurate anymore because even though the system itself can theoretically run it, it won't work natively because of the Steam requirement. And even if you want to play in offline mode, it still wants to have Steam installed before you can actually go ahead and play the game. So this isn't necessarily a tutorial, nor is it not. In a way, I'll, I guess, show you what to do or what not to do depending on if we succeed or not but this will also be a documentation of what actually happens when you try to install and run Half-Life. We'll take a look at the system specifications of the Dell. We do actually have 512 megabytes of RAM, and we also have a 1.13 gigahertz Pentium 3 processor. Like I also said earlier, this is a 20 gigabyte hard drive. Yeah, so capacity 18 gigabytes, and the game itself is 4.5 gigabytes. And let's begin the process of installing a game 2004 style. All right, so check out that installer. So install Half-Life 2, visit the website, visit Valve website. Let's just go ahead and install. To take advantage of Steam, It'll convert your Valve games to the Steam format, and afterwards your computer needs to be connected to the internet to play Steam games. So we've got to skip all the way down there. And, ooh, please select your internet. So do we have a modem, or do we have DSL? I guess we'll go ahead and select LAN, and then Program, Files, Valve, Steam. And yeah, let's add shortcuts. But now we also have that we don't have DirectX 9 or greater, so it'll update, which is cool. And I guess we'll begin the install process. So this will be sped up and will eventually return to either disk two or whenever this is completely done.
and there it is. Half-Life 2 has been successfully installed. And according to the clock down here, we started at around 1 a.m. And it's now 2 a.m. And of course, according to the clock, it is 2004. And yeah, I haven't set the date and time correctly on this, but I guess we could technically experience a launch day style release. Now, I'm not sure what version of DirectX is pre-installed on here, but considering it said it detected a lower version, we might as well go ahead and install DirectX 9. And one restart later, we have a installed copy of Half-Life 2, Counter-Strike Source, and Steam. But of course, we're gonna see if we can make these games work without Steam. But first off, let's actually look at what happens when we open up Steam. All right, so we have this awesome, I guess, theme that Steam used back in the early days. If we click on create new account, I doubt this would work nowadays. And log in, unable to connect to the Steam network, offline mode is unavailable because there's no Steam login. You won't be able to use Steam until you can connect to the Steam network again. So this is of course a client side issue. It's not because Steam servers are down, it's because this is a basically 20 year old copy of Steam. And I'm assuming if we try out Half-Life, it's just going to bring up the Steam prompt again. So we have to figure out what to do in order to bypass this and just play Half-Life 2 and possibly even Counter-Strike Source. Now I've spent quite a while looking at the files for the Steam installer and the Half-Life 2 and even Counter-Strike games. And basically the conclusion is, is that if you are installing it the way it was intended to be installed back in the early 2000s, then it would have been fine. But if you're doing that same process nowadays, it will not work because everything leads back to Steam. Now, the game itself is here, but the only real way we can actually look at it is through these GCF files. And the only way we can actually play these is if we somehow extract them. And instead of doing the auto exe installer, we just have to extract the files directly from all of the disks and essentially make our own copy of Half-Life. So even though it is really cool to see the Half-Life 2 installer, this is just not useful to us, so we'll have to close out of it and instead access the files on the CD itself. Now there is a whole bunch of files here, but the main one that we're looking at is this Half-Life2.cab file and as you can see, the size is 650 megabytes. This is essentially the entire CD, and that is where the game is stored. So we'll have to copy these files over. Each CD has one of these CAD files. We'll copy them over to the computer and put them all into one directory or one folder. And that way we can begin to basically decompress these files and extract the GCF files that we saw earlier So what do we do now with all these CAB files? Well, we're going to need a way to extract these files. And for that, I have 7-zip installed. And this is actually the latest release that I got from the website, at least the 32-bit version. Now, I don't know if this is gonna work, but let's go ahead and install it. And I guess it works. So if you're still using Windows 2000, then 7-zip has got you covered. We'll go ahead and 7-zip these, extract files, extract these two, so it'll go to the new Half-Life 2 folder. Now we'll just wait here and wait for all the files to decompress, and here are all the files. Now again, I did this because I am not sure if anything would have changed with the actual installation with Steam versus just taking all the files directly from the CDs. So it does look like they are essentially the same files. So here is a list of what's in the one that we just extracted, and here's the list of what's inside the Steam Apps folder when you actually install it as it was intended. For now, I will use the ones that we just extracted just to be on the safe side, and this is probably the way to go if you are actually going to do something like this. So let's go ahead and continue with these files. And now, because these files are 
GCF files, we need a separate program to actually use these. And with that, we have GCFscape 1.3.1. Now, GCFscape will help us use these files and actually do something with them. And I installed 1.3.1 because I'm not exactly sure if the later version will work with these files. I'm not sure this was ever intended to be done on Windows 2000. So let's go ahead and run this. And this requires version 1.1 of the .NET framework. Now, if I click on yes, then it's going to give me an error page, I'm assuming. Yes, page can't be displayed. I will go ahead and download .NET Framework 1.1 and just transfer it over on a USB stick. One quick download later and now we have the NetFrame installer. So let's go ahead and install Microsoft.NET Framework 1.1 and it did not give us the error message anymore. So let's go ahead and install. But now we have a proper program to deal with all of these files. So we should, in theory, be able to open all of these files. And I guess we could just go one by one. So it took me a minute to figure it out, but it's actually pretty easy once you know what you're doing. So I already extracted one file, the first GCF file. But now let's go ahead and show the materials one. So if we click on this, you just have to right click on root and then click on extract. And then here you can just select your file. So in this case, I'm putting them all in the Half-Life 2 folder. And then the process just begins. And I'm assuming if we look into here, this is where all the files are going. We just have to do this a couple more times and we are one step closer to Half-Life 2. So here is where the bad news comes into play because I cannot get it to work. And another future jump cut because I want to try and explain this in a better way. So in summary, don't use Windows 2000 for this. I'm pretty sure that's where all of the issues came from because I spent a lot of time trying to do this and I kept getting problems that seemed to not be an issue with newer versions of Windows. I have not done this on anything else. I've only tried it on Windows 2000, but this is supposed to work, or at least in some way it, it should be possible, but I'm pretty sure that Windows 2000 is why it's not letting me do this. I installed Windows 2000 extended kernel as well for additional support, and that seemed to do nothing. I don't think GCFscape is the problem because it seemed to extract the files just fine. And at the end, I even installed a Steam emulator to see if that would make it run somehow. That did absolutely nothing. I'm pretty sure, again, it's a compatibility issue with Windows 2000, so that did not work. And I also tried making some shortcuts to add commands to those shortcuts to get it to run or skip some checks in order for it to actually open the game and that also did nothing that was probably actually the closest i got to it doing something but in the end it still resulted in dll issues which is again most likely because it's on windows 2000 now running the game itself should not be a problem because again it is specifically listed as being supported on the box Windows 2000 should not be a problem for the actual game, but the process of making it work on Windows 2000 should probably be done on a different version of Windows. Because until you have the final game actually up and running, it just keeps giving different errors that don't let it work. Now, even though that's pretty bad news, there is actually some good news out of this. Now, first of all, I'm sure that if I do the same process again on a newer copy of Windows, it would probably work just fine, but instead of investing all of that time into the same process and potentially get a non-functional result again, there is an even better solution to this that is essentially the perfect alternative to the native installer. And I don't know how I did not find this earlier while doing research for this, but a YouTuber known as XJR9000 has made a dedicated installer for Half-Life 2, Half-Life 1, and even Counter-Strike, and it looks essentially 
like a drop-in replacement. It looks identical to the native installer, but it completely skips Steam. So you're able to play it on these older systems, which is the perfect alternative. And now we just have to download it from a modern PC. I'll transfer it over to the Dell, and then hopefully we'll get Half-Life 2 up and running on Windows 2000. Now I will probably copy over the files onto a physical DVD at some point to have alongside the physical retail release, and that way they can all stay in one box. It's on the desktop, so now we just have to 7-zip this, extract files, select that folder, and there it is. So now we just have to extract all the files, and let's hope that we have enough space on the hard drive. And what you're watching now is the last recorded recording of this computer running Windows 2000. Because after this, well, I'm assuming something happened with the hard drive, maybe a bad sector or something. It seems like that was the case later on when I was trying to troubleshoot this. When I was actually extracting this, the timer kept going up and the read speeds kept going down in 7-zip. And then I decided to restart the computer, which probably wasn't the best thing to do, but I wanted to stop it because clearly something was wrong. And of course it blue screened. So I tried to enter safe mode, did absolutely nothing. It couldn't even do that. Clearly something happened with the copy of Windows 2000. So everything that we have done to this machine so far uh, is gone. Essentially, I do have the Windows 2000 install CD, and I do have the files somewhere. I'll have to find them, but I'm pretty sure they are saved somewhere. But this PC is now in an unusable state because of that hard drive. Up to this point, it was working just fine, but I'm assuming because of how many reads and writes it was doing, because we were trying the native installer and other installers as well, installing Windows 2000s. That also did nothing because clearly something is wrong with one of the sectors, specifically around 25 to 26% of the install progress when it's trying to format the drive in the installer. That's where it freezes. And it's unfortunate, but I guess that means there'll be a part two to this video. Now, I do have some plans to try and see if we can recover the hard drive and make it usable again. If not though, I do have a backup and a larger hard drive that we can use for this, but I want to see if we can actually get the original hard drive working again. And granted, it is only 20 gigabytes. For a machine like this, it's perfectly fine. That basically summarizes everything that happened up until now. So there might be some hope yet to save this hard drive, but we're going to have to use another PC in a usable state to see if we can even recover it. Stay tuned for that because I definitely want to see if this hard drive is saveable. And if not, I still want to see Half-Life playing on this Dell. We're so close, but of course something had to happen last minute. I know it's not the ending that you guys were hoping for. If you're interested in seeing this actually working someday, then consider subscribing and stay tuned for the channel for future updates because I can't wait to actually play something on this Dell with all those 3D futuristic 2004 graphics. If you made it this far, at least now we know what not to do. Stay tuned for more. And as always, thanks for watching.